Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Dees, this is my workshop. Today I'm gonna make a another lathe carriage stop, but a different design. This is one that uh, Dave's made and several other people. There's a lot of people that have made this style. If you recall, the first lathe carriage stop that I made was, was a bar that would go across the blade bed and then a, a, a cap head screw that would pull up a bar underneath and just clamp it into place. This one, I actually want to attempt to cut a, an angle in the material and be able to cover the one of the lathe ways angle pieces on top of the lathe bed. And I'm going to use this big old chunk of aluminum. This is a one by six aluminum rectangle bar. I think I got this one with my one of the proto boxes I bought from Online Metals. Not a sponsor or anything. I just that's just where I got it, paid for it, and. I've been waiting for a nice project for that. I think that's gonna be the project for this. The next thing I wanna do is draw this project up, put it on paper, get my mind wrapped around what we're gonna be doing, and formulate a plan before we go and start cutting material. Let's get started with that. This first iteration, I was thinking incorrectly. There is a step down from where the V is on the lathe bed and where the there's a little bit of a lip where the bed is and then where it comes underneath in order to clamp it down. I'm going to have to make a little L piece here. So that's why I went down to this re iteration of the drawing. These are going to be my screws, my cap head screws, in order to clamp down the the piece that will go underneath the lathe bed, the lathe ways in order to, you know, clamp it on. And there'll be two of those. That way I'm, it's not rocking. I could probably do one, but I might do two. This one is going to be a sacrificial cap head screw. Now it's, it should be offset from these two screws and it will be when I make it. It'll be over in here or something. But what that does is let you bring your carriage up if you push it up against it and back, up against it and back, and you can adjust that screw in and out for a little bit of fine tune measurements, but more importantly, it's sacrificial. If this gets marred up, you just need to get rid of it and put a new one in. All you gotta do is take it out, put a new one in. Overall length here is gonna be about two inches. I drew this top view over here. You can kind of see the idea here. 
inch wide is plenty. That's going to be basically the thickness of the material. That's going to be the width. And then under here, it's going to be about three quarter in height, three quarter in height, inch and a half total height. I think that should cover it. I'll double check all these measurements. Um, but it's a, a half inch or so is where I'll have the material in order to screw into just to give it enough meat. And then underneath that's, uh, that's also about a half inch. So this total piece here will be about an inch in length. I should write that down. We'll just do that because that matters. So this is also half inch. So a total of one inch for both. So I think that's the idea. Uh, I'm gonna make it out of aluminum. You saw the piece in the last clip. And the next thing we wanna do is kinda decide how much material we need out of that chunk of aluminum I have and give ourselves a little bit extra cause I wanna fly cut and kinda clean this up. When I get done with this one, I'd like it to look really nice. And I wanna make sure I have enough extra material to be able to complete all of the tasks that I need to do. So maybe I'll make it uh, an yeah, inch and a half. Two by two by two square would be more than enough material. Let me think about that. We'll get it on the material and we will continue on. Well, we got our blank cut out. This is uh, it's going to be the piece that we're going to be working with. Nice chunk of aluminum. We'll get this set aside for that next project. A lot of nice aluminum there. And what we're going to want to do is mark this out so that it resembles our workpiece. And if I were, you know, I, I went back and I measured a couple times. We basically need, this should be about two inches wide, and we need three quarter inch of material on the bottom. And that will give us plenty to thread into. It's a little over three quarter inches. If I do three quarter and three quarter, the top will actually, the top's gonna be a through hole, not threaded, but the bottom will be threaded. So three quarter, 
will give it a lot of meat to thread into. And remember, this first portion here is going to be, you know, there'll be a half inch here where I can drill and tap so that we can thread into it. And the rest of this will be like an L. We'll mill out that material and that will clamp up against the under on the bottom side of the ways. So I think I'm just going to split it. I'm going to give it's more than an inch and a half. So I'm going to give the top. I'm just going to split it. I'm just going to do a little over three quarter. Right there. A little over three quarter. And that will, and we'll come back a little bit. And that's going to allow us to have our two work pieces. So we want to cut that basically in half in order to continue on. And we'll do that next on the bandsaw. We need to get this laid out. This is going to be the, the clamp for the lathe. This is a carriage stop version 2.0. Uh, there's a lot of designs out there on the web where people have made this style different from the first one that I made. And I want to go ahead and make one of those as well, just keeping with the lathe improvements. And these are the pieces that we cut out and we're ready to continue on with. One piece is going to be the top. If you imagine the, the lathe bed would be this way. Top will go up here, the bottom will clamp, and these two will kind of pinch together. So we'll focus, we need to, we, we need to lay these out. And what I want to do is, I'm going to use the Sharpie that I bought this time instead of the die chem. And we'll start with that in order to get these pieces laid out. We'll just do them separately. Works pretty easily. There we go. Let that dry up, and then we will kind of draw out on here what our parts are going to look like, and then we'll do we'll we'll pause, make sure that we've got everything the way we want it, and we'll continue on. Again, what we're looking for is something like this, where we're gonna have our, our 45 degree angle in the top piece, and then all of this will be cut and milled out in order to clamp the two pieces together. This top piece may actually be milled a little bit shallower than this side, I believe. Actually, it shouldn't matter. There just might be a little gap there as they clamp together, but I do want these two to come as flat as they can. But uh, that's what we're looking to do. Regardless, these need to clamp. This has to mount underneath the lathways in order for it to really secure properly. So we'll let that dry up, and then we'll draw out this piece, and we'll continue on. We want 7 8 in until the beginning of the, the V, it starts 7 eighths in. So we could go up to an inch, an inch, and then it would be half an inch. That would leave that much. I'm going to do 7 eighths. Really don't need to go any more than that. So let's go ahead and separate these two. There's the top half. We will bring this in 7 eighths. So there's the beginning of the V-notch that comes up. I want that V-notch to be about a half inch wide total. To be well, right about here. And then, so this is where our V will be. And then I'm going to run an end mill to make the top flat. And then this, this will be where we're able to drill and tap 
well, we'll tap down here, but we'll be able to drill a through hole in the top in order to clamp these two together. This piece is going to need a little bit different a little bit different layout. Essentially we're going to come over the same distance here. And then we will bring it down. Oh, I'm not sure. Five eighths, I think. I'll, I'll double check those measurements. But we will have an L shape in here. And then this will have some excess material that we'll just cut off. And we'll have to mill this material out to fit underneath the lathways. We're going to do that after we get the top piece created, fitting properly. And we'll come back to that. So we'll set this one aside for now. We need a 45 degree angle here. Let me uh, check my stock. I should have something to be able to do that. I might use the angle blocks and that'll give us a good idea of where we're going to mill that out. And then we can get this mounted up in the vise and do our milling operation. I want to get at least two of these sides faced off and squared up. And then we'll do the other two sides. I'm looking for these outsides here. Not necessarily these faces. And that is because I want to mount this at an angle with my V-blocks in order to do this 45 degree angle. So what I'm going to do is put this in the vise and we'll face, we'll do a end mill on the side here and then we'll clean up the top and we'll flip it over and we'll do the same for these two sides. Then we should have these four sides squared up and then we can work on these last remaining sides. So the first thing that I want to do are these two sides. Get a rapid handle. We want that to stick out a little bit so we can clean that up. I think I will stick this other scrap in here as well, just to help hold it on this back side. Remember, we're not working with this side, we're working with this piece here. And we're going to get the top and this side squared off first. We'll flip it over and then we will square up the other two sides.
That looks pretty good. Clean some of this off. Fine little swarth. That's smooth. This fly cutter does such a smooth job. Makes the finishes look fantastic. All right, I'm gonna swap this tooling out and then we'll face off this side and we'll flip it over and do the same thing. We're gonna go ahead and face this side off now. We got that fly cut and it's really smooth. I'm gonna face this side off. I'm actually gonna bring it back and then go the other direction. That'll be a conventional cut. I wanna get some oil on there and show you what we're doing. see let's clean this up that's smooth enough for me Let's flip this over and we'll do the other side. Super smooth. There we go.
So we're going to continue on with this project. This is the lathe carriage stop, second design, and I've been just trying to fiddle around and figure out how to best mount this at a 45 degree angle. I didn't want to tilt the head and, and do that. I don't want to take it out of tram and mess with that. It's really kind of tricky. Maybe some of you out there know of some tri tips and tricks on how to mount materials in a vise with solid and, and so they're stable so you can actually mill, perform your milling operations. That'd be helpful if you want to put some comments down there. But I've got everything set up in such a way where it's going to be stable. It's very tight. This is at the 45 degree angle that I want and I'm ready to move forward. And what I'm going to do is start and I'm, I've, got, I've already got the depth set on the headstock where I want it. And I'm just going to feed the, the Y axis back towards me and just go back and forth until I get the, and it's about three eighths, three eighths depth across that I want to make. And then we'll take it out and we'll do a test fit over on the lathe. And then I'd like to maybe put a, a flat in the top of it uh, at the peak instead of just having a sharp peak. But for now, let's go ahead and get our 45 degree angle. That's really the trickiest part of this project and we'll get past that. So let's get started. So we don't gall. I'm going to put some oil on there. That climb cut coming back across really smoothed that out. Do some measurement before I take it out of here and see if we're close. If we are, then I'm going to go ahead and do a test fit. I guess this would be a fine cut. There's one hole for it. Probably gonna do. Do a measuring here. Wow. 
well. That's just under a half inch. I think I need to go a little bit farther than that. Measuring the... Well, it looks good though. But measuring the width of this. It's a little over half inch. So I'm going to take a little bit more off and I think we'll be right where we need to be. Sorry about the background noise, it's super hot, it's middle of summer and I can't be out here unless we get some AC, which we finally have. So there's just going to be a little background noise from that. We are going to stop there and take this out and give it a test fit. I think it's going to be just fine. Need some of these chips off of here. Do a quick measurement. We're going to do a quick measurement here. It should be just over half an inch and it is. You can see that, hopefully. We're going to take that out of there, and we're going to do a test fit over on the lathe. There we go. If this piece was any bigger, I wouldn't have been able to mount it like that in the mill vise. There we go. So there is our piece that we milled out. Let me clean it up and we'll go do a quick test fit on the on the lathe. Again, I apologize for the background noise, but I got to have the AC running. It's, it's just too hot. So here we go. It's, it's way too big. So what I need to do is mill down some of these flats. That's all right. We can we can fix that. Other thing I can do is just mount it like that. No, I'm gonna want it like this. So we need to take off some of the thickness about the difference between that and that. So I didn't didn't quite do that right. But the setup worked. Uh, I just went too deep. I should have taken that out and tested it before I got to this point. But that's okay. You can also consider using it for, you know, flip flop, and I'm going to use it for this piece. Let me do some thinking and uh, we'll come back. But that is the right angle. That setup did work and will work. I just went too far. That does work. Gives me something to measure. I'll bring you back. I'm gonna to try to get you in here a little closer and see if you can see what's going on. We're gonna take a quarter inch off of the top of this and see if it fits better. I'd like to salvage this piece if I can. So I'm gonna use a DRO in order to measure down from my Z axis. So I'm gonna do a touch off, zero it out, and we're gonna come down 125 thou.
Hopefully you can see that better than before. Yeah. That was 50 thou. That's good. Um, we're going to bring it down a total of a quarter inch. And a quarter inch, or sorry, an eighth of an inch is 125 thou. So that was 50. I think we got it. Let's uh, get this cleaned up. I'll get this out of here and then we'll go do a test fit. Here's our part. We got that milled down. You can see the, the end mill markings on there, but it's very smooth. Let's see what we did here. Does that look better? Yeah. Maybe a little too much off, I guess, but uh, that's looking a lot better. So when I screw that down and clamp it, that should do just fine. I might actually take an end mill and flatten off the bottom of that so that it seats down farther. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Or we'll scrap this part and start over. It's improving and I'm learning some things, but that 45 degree angle does fit nicely. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, see if we can't get that to seat. I'm gonna flatten this bottom because I wanted to anyway. Need something a little bit wider than the width of that, which is almost, it's a little over an eighth. And the depth is gonna be 16th, I believe. Again, sorry about the noise. We're going to go ahead and flatten out the bottom of this so that it can seat deeper. And I'm just going to flatten out all the way to that peak and take that out. And then we'll give it a test fit. This is a slightly oversized uh, end mill, so I think it's going to work, but we'll find out. We're gonna try that. We'll use a little bit of lube. See how that looks. Let's take that out of there and see what it looks like on the mill or the lathe. Not quite there. We're going to take a little bit more off of either side of that. So what I want to do is take some off of either side. We'll do a, a quick fit and see what that looks like and we'll take some more off if we need to.
I'm gonna keep messing with this. I just keep whittling it down. And the odd thing about the the way that this sits on the lathe is there's a step on the, it's not just a complete V down to the lathe flat portion of the lathe bed. So I gotta keep fiddling with this. So what I'm gonna do is take a little off of either side at an angle again in order to get that to seat down where I want it. So we're gonna put this back in here. Like we had before. And hopefully we're able to get this to seat in there nice and tight. And hopefully I can get an end mill in there like I need to in order to work with this piece. Yeah, I figured. That's okay. I, I just need to raise that up a little bit. That'll work. Let's see. There we go. About how we had it before. Let's see if we can tighten that up. I think this will work. Let's line this up. And so I'm going to use the DRO. If I take 10 thou off of one side, I'll take 10 thou off of the bottom side. So I'm just going to take equal amounts off until I get it to where it will seat down flush with the with the lathe ways like I want. Turn that off, clean this up, and let's fit it. Let's see how that fits on the lathe. And we will rinse and repeat. This piece that we're just deep making that groove a little bit deeper. Hopefully we can get that to fit on there nicely. We need to take more off. Here's a little close-up look. So we finally got that seating how I want it to. I could mount it this way and then drill and tap a screw. It doesn't leave me a lot of meat over here on this side, but I could. That was kind of my plan. I like how this sits. A lot of meat over here. However, I kind of think it might be more useful if we mount it this way. Same same thing. It, covers that lip, it sits, seats nicely, but this gives me a whole lot more room to drill and tap a set screw or a cap head screw in order to clamp down on the piece that goes underneath here. That also gives me some meat over here in order to put a sacrificial cap head screw as my actual stop rather than bumping into the actual workpiece here. So I'm thinking that we want to probably go this route. The next thing I want to do is 
get my measurements for the, the bottom piece and get that milled. Because I, what I want to do is clamp these two together, how they're going to be, and then later, as they're clamped together, put them in the mill vise and clean up all the surfaces together so it looks like it's as one. Someday my hopes are to maybe anodize this part, make it look nicer. But for now, I believe this is the route I'm gonna go. If I was to tighten that down and it clamps underneath, it should stay put. So that is the plan. Just wanted to give you a close up view of that. Either way, it's finally, we got it nailed down to where it's working a whole lot better. It's a little tricky because there's a flat on the inside of, of this where the bed is. Okay, we're going to square off this piece now. I'm gonna do these two sides here and then flip it over and do the other two sides. And those will be the side, the faces that will be mounted to marry with the, the top piece. So I need to get these, because it's still rough cut from the bandsaw, so I need to get these uh, milled down. Let's get started with that. Let's go ahead and use Joe Pie's method where it will, the cut will be such a way where it will actually bring the, the cut into the workpiece and hopefully prevent any burrs. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, there's no burr. That technique works really well. I like it. It may look awful, but it's it's really smooth. Okay, so let's flip this around. Now that we don't have the burrs, we can continue on here without having the burrs impact how it mounts in the mill vise. Now we've got the sides squared off that we need squared off in order to continue making this part. Looks really nice. Yeah. Let's get that out of there. Hey, welcome back. Well, I'm gonna close out this video as a part one. I'm gonna do part one and part two. This is taking a lot longer than I thought it would. 
Seems like such a simple part, but it's actually a little more complex than you might think. There's, sorry for the band-aid, I uh, cut my finger, not in the workshop. Uh, I was cooking dinner. Uh, be careful in the kitchen as well. This, the, getting this set right so it fits properly on my lathe, and I would argue that every lathe is gonna be a little different, and you know, you, you gotta fiddle with this. It isn't just a straight 45 degree angle and boom, it works great. There is a, a shoulder on the ways bed, on the lathe ways, that kind of causes a an issue. You, you're gonna need a flat up here in order to get it to seat properly because this has to come farther down than you think. Um, otherwise, it, it just won't fit and it'll rock on the on the uh, 45 degree inverted 45 degree angle that's on your lathe bed. So we ended up getting all of these surfaces. I fly cut these, didn't need to, but I fly cut these on the earlier just to get everything squared up so I could begin working on this project. Just kind of fun to work with. The finishes on the fly cut always looks great. But in the end, uh, I was still working with the piece, had to adjust it several times, so I went back to an end mill, and you can see the markings there. This fits really well on the lathe now. I can mount it this way, or I could flip it over and mount it this way. I think I'm gonna go this way. We will, this is the, the piece I just finished working on. It is also very flat now. I use the end mill. It's, uh, it looks very nice. And uh, now I'm able to work with these two pieces together and continue finishing this project. Now, the this will be the piece that mounts it and squeezes it to the lathe bed. It will need to have a, a shoulder cut in here and it will not need to be nearly this long. So I'll probably cut off mo you know half of this block anyway, but then there will be a simple L here. I just need to make sure I get my depths right so that it isn't isn't too deep. If it's too deep, it won't clamp. It'll just be sitting in there freely. So I need this to be shallower than the lathe bed so that it can actually crunch down and, and squeeze and clamp and prevent it from moving. So my plans are to mount it like this. I'm going to drill and tap. I'm going to drill a through hole in the top and I'm going to tap the bottom. I'm going to do it out here on the end. I'm thinking about doing a counter bore for a cap head screw so it's flush. I think that'd be kind of nice. And I don't need anything on this side. I'm also contemplating leaving it as a full piece, except for the L portion that I need to cut. And the reason for that is I'd like to clamp it all together and then fly cut all of the surfaces to make it look really nice when I'm done. But it, that will be in the next video. Uh, I'm gonna close this one out here. Like I said, it's kind of going on long. I know um, I like to show a lot of the milling and, and all that. We'll fast through, through forward through a lot of that, but I wanna get that done. I wanted to show you these pieces up close. Turned out pretty pretty nice. And uh, we're going to continue on in the next part. Uh, sorry for the sounds, the fan sounds, the air conditioner, but it, it's really brutally hot. And without that, I wouldn't even be able to, have to come out here and do any projects and work on anything. So it is what it is during these hot summer months. But, uh, you know, it'll get cooler and, and we won't have to run that thing later on. But for now, I want to get this thing knocked out. So this is part one. We're going to continue part two next week, and uh, I hope to see you on that one as well. Thanks for watching.